what's up guys it is well for me it's actually Monday at 12 43 p.m. and I just left you guys at school an hour or two ago for you hopefully it's Wednesday at 10 a.m. Um, so here's the deal I have a full-time job and as that full-time job goes um, I'm a newspaper reporter and I have to go and travel to do various stories from time to time and so whenever I'm absent from school that's I'm doing my real job that pays me real money um, and so this time last year when we were reading this book the captain's dog in class um, I had to go to st. Charles Missouri for three days and it was it was cool I had a good time while I was there I realized while you guys were back in school reading the book that hey st. Charles is where Lewis and Clark started off from that's where they launched their journey so while I was there I took a you know I stuck away for a few hours and I went down to the Missouri River where they started off from um, and I, I checked it out and it was kind of cool to be there where it literally happened I mean we have in Jeff City where they stopped for a few days and repaired their boat but in St. Charles is where it started and I thought that's kind of cool um, they even had a small museum there with uh, a replica of the boats they had and it was really really cool um, and I also did some investigative work and uh, actually found some authentic food from the time period and it was it was okay uh, you know that buffalo sausage and uh, what was it steam man eats the, the baby mice yeah so while I was there I took a short video, video and so what's gonna happen is you're going to watch the video I took for last year's class in st. Charles so you're gonna watch bits of that and then right now I'm on my way to Kansas City for another assignment and while I'm in Kansas City hey you know what it's on the Missouri River Lewis and Clark stopped there for a few days so we're gonna explore a park we're going to you know do some more um, authentic dining that kind of thing and uh, just get the whole spirit of it and hopefully you will feel like you are on a virtual field trip so remember your assignment and your homework you need to get to page 198 by next Monday remember to keep and save your um, study guides those little test things um, those are also due on Monday it's easier to do that while you read along obviously if you lose that you get zero points so don't lose those if you have ones from this past Monday that you're supposed to turn in I think two or three of you don't, didn't turn those in you must hand those in and as soon as possible or you're gonna get a zero and that's out of a hundred points and I don't want to give you guys F's but if you don't turn it in you're gonna get an F so if you brought those today turn them in if not let me know as soon as possible what's going on so we can work something out okay um, sit back relax enjoy the show be quiet if I get a note from your sub that says you guys were rowdy um, there will be some parents getting some emails okay so sit back enjoy and have fun all right bye Good morning, class. I was all here in St. Charles, Missouri um, for work, and I was all excited because I got to have a day off from you guys uh, doing my real job. <sighs> but then as I looked around, um, there were just so many things that pulled me back um, to what we were studying, what we were reading about with Lewis and Clark, and of course our intrepid hero, Seaman the Dog. Um, as I walked down the convention hall, there was a mural of um, Lewis and Clark in the keelboat where they're all in their uniforms when they're having the first parley with the Indians at Council Bluff See up there above me above my head Yeah, Lewis and Clark they're everywhere and then as I Got thinking about it, you know st. Charles is on the Missouri River. It's actually part of the Lewis and Clark Trail so in honor of them and in honor of you I decided to go and experience a little bit of that firsthand.
So we are actually going to a restaurant called Lewis and Clark's here in St. Charles. It's on the riverfront where they would have sailed by, um, what, some 200 and whatever years ago. Um, and I am not looking at you, I'm looking at traffic and so looking at traffic, looking at traffic. Yay, I didn't cause a wreck. Um, yeah, you really take note when you turn 16, don't film while you drive and don't run and get all light like I just did. Anyway, we're going to this restaurant in St. Charles, Lewis and Clark's, and hopefully they have um, authentic food from this uh, journey. That means lots of buffalo, either buffalo sausage, like, uh, Oh, what's his name? Charbonneau prepares when the captain's getting angry at him, or perhaps jerk buffalo, maybe dried venison, or even as seaman eats, um, little baby mice. Yum, yum, yum. Uh, maybe that's an appetizer here at Lewis and Clark's. So I'm going to continue to drive and not run over anyone, and I'll let, pick you up in a few minutes. Pro tip wait till the little old ladies cross your path before you pull out in the traffic. No parking zone, no parking zone. Hmm. Nowhere to park, nowhere to park. <sighs> this must be Lewis, how, how Lewis and Clark felt when they encountered all of their obstacles. They had to sleep outside, all the bugs, try to catch their own food, no idea where they were going, and I can't find a place to park. Hashtag the struggle is real. Ooh. Parallel parking, can I do that? Let's see. So I have good news and I have better news. The good news, I parallel parked. The better news, I can see lunch. Okay, we're here, see the sign? Okay, so we're gonna see what we have, nice and authentic, ready? Nacho Supreme, that sounds authentic. Toasted ravioli, they definitely had that on their trip. So I was thinking about uh, chicken fingers. However, there is something that does catch my eye. A Jeff City sandwich. It, it might be just meant to be. We'll see. So as you may have figured out by now, um, I didn't really expect there to be authentic food here at Lewis and Clark's and I'm basically trolling you um, knowing that I'm enjoying my lunch um, long before you can enjoy your lunch. So instead of the authentic uh, whiskey that Lewis and Clark drink on their journey, I'm having Diet Coke. And instead of eating nuts and berries, I'm having a lovely appetizer of toasted ravioli. Ha ha, I'm eating, you're not. All right, so you remember about the hardships that Lewis and Clark had to endure and how uh, my hardships were enduring um, having to look for a parking space? Well, I found some more hardships that um, I have to endure that are actually even worse than uh, what Lewis and Clark had to endure. So, what could possibly be worse than uh, sleeping outdoors, fighting with Indians, dealing with mutiny within your own camp, or that kind of thing? I'll tell you what's worse. They gave me sweet and sour sauce with my chicken fingers. Okay. No ketchup, sweet and sour sauce. I, had to, I, I don't have the words. I can't even. Alright, so that did not accomplish my goal of um, being an authentic educational experience for you. However, I am no longer hungry. And hopefully you are very, very hungry. Um, so you're welcome for that. We are going to make one more stop, however, on our journey and see if we can make it a tiny, tiny bit more educational. I'll be right back. So, here we are. We are at the Missouri River, here at St. Charles. And just a few, a few miles down that way is where Lewis and Clark would have set off on their journey. And they would have floated down the river, floaty, 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 float. And 
this giant uh, ship drink barge would not have been here back in 1804, but uh, you get the idea. They floated down the river, and if I float down here, I'd eventually get to Jeff City, and then on up the Missouri River, all the way up into Iowa, and toward their destination, the Pacific Northwest. Anyway, um, can't, well, maybe you can. There, there, there's a little museum set up, and I wish I could take you guys on a field trip to here. Unfortunately, we can't, but I can go, and I can shoot a little bit of footage for you. So, get ready for a virtual field trip. Okay, so here at the museum, they actually have a model or a replica of the keelboat and some of the pirouettes. You can kind of see in the back the red canoe looking thing. Um, unhelpfully, they're locked up in cages, but you can get the idea of kind of the size that we're working with. So here's some of the locked boxes where they would have kept their supplies, weapons, and um, trinkets to give out. Even the main boat, the keel boat, It's not that big. You can see there's the mast and the sail that broke in Jeff City. And there's one small cabin for probably the two captains to share. And I'm really sorry you cannot see it better. And I'm also sorry I'm speaking quietly so that people around me don't think I'm insane. As you can see, this is where they started off. May 21st, 1804. And it took them till June 4th to get to Jefferson City. So, what takes us less than an hour and a half by car took them hmm, almost two weeks by boat. All right, so I'm in the museum. And what do you think the first thing I see is when I come in? It's the Dadgum Prairie Wolf that. Lewis and Clark murdered in cold blood. <sighs> I'm never gonna get over this. These are the uh, medals that it refers to in the book where they gave the Indian chiefs with Jefferson's face on it. It's kind of cool, of course. More stuffed canines. Will the horror never end? Oh, hey, there's a prairie dog too. So this is kind of cool. Um, it never really occurred to me, but Lewis and Clark uh, collected a lot of geology samples along their journey. And these are just some of the types of materials they would have picked up and brought with them on their way home. So, that's kind of cool. Okay, so these are some models of the boats that aren't in cages. A little bit smaller, but you can still kind of get the idea. So, I mean, they're not tiny little canoes, but they're still, they're small enough that you don't want to spend Three years in them. And here we see the most deadly creature of the whole bunch. The feared beaver that almost murders Seaman. Shame on him. Okay, so a big group of kids just got out of the video and now I feel really self-conscious. So the rest of it's gonna be just narration. Or not narration, but just video, okay? Did you notice the red stocking cap? Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, we're out of here. Boop. All right, so I can't lie, this museum is probably not worth five bucks admission. However, there is something incredible up here. Lewis and Clark puppets. All right, so like I said, probably not worth your $5 admission. Come across, ladies, it's cool. Um, probably not worth your $5 admission, but, you know, I was here in town anyway, and I love you guys, so 
it was worth spending my hard-earned cash to uh, bring you a little bit of context, hopefully, to the story you're reading. So one of the things that's always amazed me about the Lewis and Clark Corps of Discovery Expedition is just, you know, how long the thing was. I mean, talk about a road trip. I mean, this is a two to three year road trip. And they kind of knew the stakes going into it, but they really didn't even have a destination or know exactly how long they might be. They thought, you know, hey, best case scenario, six months we'll be back home. Or, you know, worst case scenario, we might never make it home. Um, you know, right now I'm on this road trip to Kansas City. And that's two and a half hours. And for some reason, the road trip to Kansas City just bothers me. I don't like it. Um, St. Louis, no problem. Going to visit my family in Oklahoma, that's six and a half hours. No problem. But Kansas City is just boring. Um, I don't like to drive. But if you can imagine being stuck in a boat with the same people for three years and that's what their trip ends up being is three years I mean that's just <laughs> imagine how you get on your brother and sister's nerves in the back seat of the car I can't even begin to fathom the same boat for three years and not seeing any other humans other than the Indians who don't speak English but it just goes to show how truly dedicated they were to their goals, which were, again, exploring the new world that Jefferson had purchased, and then also searching for the Northwest Passage. I mean, they were dedicated. It's it's amazing that more people didn't try to desert than uh, actually did. So, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool. You know, one of the interesting things about Missouri highways is that, this isn't the case in all other states, but on Missouri interstates, you have mile markers every two-tenths of a mile. So that was 117.2. And coming up here, we're going to have 117.0. Is that right? Let's see. 117.0. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this is very useful. Um, if I have a wreck while holding on to my phone as, a QVCO as I drive, I can tell the emergency, you know, high patrol an ambulance where to come find me. I'm at a mile marker 116.6. Um, that way they know exactly where to find me. Um, what's interesting is whenever Lewis and Clark were making their journey up the, up the river, obviously they didn't have mile markers to tell them where they were, and yet their maps were so incredibly accurate. Um, you know, they were really smart engineers, and they took measurements with traditional, um, you know, navigators' tools like the sextant and astrolabe, and they measured their speed in the water um, using ropes. They were just really clever, and the maps they made, you know, that was the whole part of the journey was to help map this wilderness, um, surprisingly accurate. Um, up across the 2,000-mile stretch. They weren't off by much. Um, they did a pretty good job. So, you know, good for them. Even without mile markers, they did a great job. Hey, it's the Missouri River again. Woohoo! Yay, wasn't that fun? So did you guys see we just passed Napoleon? Or actually that's the exit for it right there. Napoleon, Missouri. Um, obviously named after the Emperor Napoleon who uh, Thomas Jefferson bought Louisiana Purchase from. Now here's what's kind of cool. Do you remember why Napoleon sold Louisiana Purchase? Someone in the back? Philip, is your hand raised? We're going to say Philip's hand is raised and Philip, please tell the class why Napoleon wanted to sell Louisiana Purchase. Go. We're going to assume Philip got that correctly. Um, Napoleon wanted to invade England. He was fighting wars in Europe. He needed cash. Plus, in his mind, um, 
we just got purchased wasn't really worth a whole bunch. Um, it was a bunch of land. What did he care about land? He had land in Europe. He didn't want to govern it all the way across the ocean. And as far as he knew, there really weren't a whole lot of natural resources available there. Um, there was some silver in the Rocky Mountains, but he didn't really know about that. Now what's interesting is, there was definitely gold further out west. But that's in the Spanish territory. Now the Spaniards were not thrilled that Napoleon gave away all this land to uh, the Americans. They liked it whenever the French were there because it was kind of a buffer between the two. Um, so the Spaniards actually dispatched five uh, different kind of, uh, what's the word? Not armies, but um, little armies. <laughs> they dispatched five teams of soldiers um, to follow Lewis and Clark and try to murder them. Um, unfortunately for the Spaniards and fortunately for the Corps Discovery and for us, um, the Spaniards never caught up with them. So, you know, kind of just a little footnote in history, but I think it's kind of cool that actually while this is all going on, while they're going up the rivers, hunting for food, talking to Indians, that kind of thing, they're actually being followed and tracked by the Spanish army. So, and now you know. I don't know about you guys, but this, this looks like a pretty sketchy uh, <laughs> historical landmark and place to, uh, huh, okay. No fireworks. Smile, I'm on camera. Well, I should hope so, holding one. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So what, I'm gonna put the camera down and explore a second and I'll get back to you. It was kind of sketchy getting here, but we are here at Cause Point. And Cause Point, as you can see in just a moment, is where the Missouri River, which is just two out oh, to the left of these trees here on the left, and the Kansas River, which is to our right, where they meet. And the Missouri River flows on toward downtown there. Of course, downtown didn't exist. So, uh, Lewis and Clark camped here in, oh, let's see, early July 1804. They camped here for three days. All when they repaired their boats and, uh, you know, scratch our food, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Cause Point. That's what they called, um, that's what Lewis and Clark called Kansas River because obviously they didn't have the name for the Kansas River, Kansas State. So they called it Cause Point. So I was doing some reading on some of the you know, historical markers that are around here. And, you know, Lewis and Clark both were big into science experiments. They collected a lot of samples. Uh, you know, we saw in St. Charles from the vi their video earlier, uh, geological samples and plants and animals, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, Lewis was such a big nerd into it that he would stop every, you know, day and sample the water. How do you sample water? Did he have a chemistry kit? No. Did he have some sort of test strip? No. He drank it. <laughs> His remark was that um, Missouri tasted better than it tasted better mint, but it tasted better. However, when he uh, measured them, the Kansas River was heavier. No. Let me check that out here in a second. Okay, the Candace River was lighter than um, the Missouri River. Now, does lighter mean darker, lighter? No, it means it weighed less. That means the Missouri River had more mud in it, which means Lewis liked his water muddy. Okay. Um, but, you know, speaking of taste, um, you know, I, I kind of feel bad about the food situation from St. Charles. You know, I admit mean, it's not like I was going to go all authentic and native and, you know, eat the bison and the bourdon blanc and the, the mice and all that stuff. And, you know, I went to the Lewis Clark restaurant, it's always there, and it's not my fault. I tried really hard. So now that I'm here at Cause Point in honor of Lewis and Clark, and in honor of you guys, um, I'm going to try to do a little bit more authentic in what I eat. Um, fun fact, I didn't realize 
comes across the river from Kansas. So I was like, oh, hey, I'm in Kansas. What do you know? Um, yeah, so let's see what I got to uh, stack on here. Sorry about that. I was videoing with my phone and someone, wrong number, called me. Um, so, yeah. So we're starting over again. Our first uh, first snack is actual, you know, it's real. This is the deer jerky. So this is actually something that they would have eaten. They would have, you know, killed, killed deer, threw it along, and they would have preserved it and dried it out. And, uh, you know, they had deer jerky. And, you know, it lasts forever. It doesn't need to be refrigerated. So a little tough. Chewy. Salty. But, you know. It's jerky. Um, part of the benefit of jerky is that it kind of loses that gamey flavor of venison. <laughs> and this is teriyaki flavored, so it's even better. You know, you could survive one if you had to. A little chewy. Let's see what else I got. Oh. <laughs> you know. Old Charbonneau and his uh, Borden Black. I could not find any buffalo sausage. Actually, that's not true. I could. However, the shipping costs to get it here in time were insane. So, I, you know, I couldn't find any reasonable buffalo sausage. So instead, we're going with man, the same guy. Uh, get, wrong number called me again. It's frustrating. So instead of buffalo sausage, we're just going with a, uh, a hot dog. Mmm, tastes like buffalo. I can hear you saying, Mr. Brian, Mr. Brian. They didn't have ketchup in 1804. Well, Jokes on you, they did. Um, I did the research. Tomato ketchup was available in the late 1780s in the US. So, they would have uh, possibly had tomato ketchup on their board block. Word of advice, gas station hot dogs don't last for Two or three hours. We'll see what else is next. You know, when you're desperate and you're starving, you know, you're in the wilderness for months, don't know when your next meal is going to come, you know, pretty much any kind of meat you can come across, whether it's squirrel, rabbit, um, you know, beaver, uh, dog, don't tell seamen, but dog, prairie dog, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, if you happen to kill a bear, you might as well eat the bear too. So I got some bear here. And uh, let's see, here's a little nugget I can show you. A little bit of bear, and you know, it's not a big piece, but I'm just going to try it out and see. Okay, it's very chewy, more chewy than I thought. Kind of sweet, almost a lemony flavor. Let's, let's try another one. This one's got a little different color to it, maybe a different cut, cut of meat. Interesting. Um, doesn't have that lemony flavor as the other one, but still very chewy. Okay, you guys can tell your friends. Bear meat, very chewy. What else? Okay, so probably the most reliable source of meat. Um, you know, the traveling on the river. So the probably most. Reliable source of meat the entire journey is going to be what? Uh, raise your hand if you know. Okay, I'm, ser I'm serious. Raise, raise your hands. I don't want to call on one of you. What would be the most popular or easy source of meat on the river? You're raising your hands. Raising your hands. Who am I going to pick on? Ashton. What's the best source of meat on the river? Speak up. I can't hear you. One more time fish good job um, I'm not a very good fisherman however I did manage to catch two uh, varieties of fish they're both pretty small um, wouldn't feed very many people but 
Here's the first one. Hold it up for you to see. I'm not a big fan of fish, so we're going to just, you know. Okay, wow. Fish is chewy, too. Tastes a lot like a bear. Actually, I'm not loving the flavor of this as much as a bear. I mean, it's chewy. It, it's got some sweetness to it, but... No, the flavor's just not there. Let's try the other variety of fish I found. You know, like the part did. They were encountering all these species they didn't know about, all these food sources they didn't know about. And they just took them out. And let's see what we got here. Alright, so let's try this other kind of fish. And again, you know, we're just observing, taking notes. See how things are different than what we've encountered in the past. So here's another kind of fish. Again, it's a pretty small little species. Unknown. Okay, this is interesting. You would have thought from the same place in the river, similar size, it might taste the same as the other fish. Which was a little bit sweet, chewy, kind of like a bear. But no, these are... Uh, these little guys have a yellowish, kind of orange tone. Very salty. Crunchy, actually. Not chewy. Yeah, I can, I can, I can get used to this. Yeah, okay. Alright, so... <laughs> it turns out that while I was um, eating those snacks and being silly, there was like a whole family of people sitting behind me on the other side of that tree um, cracking up at me. So we're going to do the rest of this in the car. <laughs> That's okay with you. Um, so at the St. Charles location last, uh, last fall, I mentioned that it really wasn't worth your $5 admission to the museum. Um, I want to take that back in comparison to cause point um I, I think you're better off going to st charles and uh spending five bucks they actually have a museum whereas this is just kind of a open air park it's not bad it's just the museum is better you can get closer to the river um there are actual displays um, they have those it's not next to a weird warehouse thing oh <laughs> and in st charles they actually have working restrooms. Um, you would have thought that those would be nice working restrooms. They say men and women on them, and yet they're closed um, for the summer. So um, I would rather drive back and forth to Kansas City or St. Louis, eat bear, than ever go into that porta potty again. Oh my gosh, I'd rather face a bear barehanded than go to that porta potty again. Okay, so we're gonna pull off under a tree, and uh, I'm kind of tired from the journey. Like I said, I don't like the trip from Jeff City to uh, Kansas City. And uh, take a quick nap. I've had all that sugary food kind of coming out on a crash here. And so I'm just gonna go under this tree and, you know, settle in for a nap. And uh, I'll talk to you guys here in a little bit, okay? okay? It won't be long, just maybe, you know, five minutes tops. So I can go to sleep really quickly. Just give me a few seconds and I'll be out, okay?
you know the speed's right i gotta have some bison i gotta have some buffalo um, not pretend either it's gotta be real It's gotta be real, the real thing. I, I, we gotta find some bison. So that's all there is to it. Hmm. Man, I really want bison. Yeah, I'm, I'm hungry for it. What do you guys think? Should we go for it? We're going for it. It's okay. Go ahead and eat just one. They'll never notice it's missing. Don't eat the bison. They're for looking, not for eating the zoo. Not a restaurant. But he's really hungry. I don't care. It's a zoo. Promised his students he would eat bison. You don't want him to make a promise to his students, do you? He ate goldfish. That's beside the point. He promised them bison. Is there no other way? Can he Google? Oh, yeah, well, let's let Google. I didn't think Google. I didn't think of that. Google. Okay, Google. Okay, bison in Kansas City, not at the zoo for eating, not for looking, don't want to get arrested, and search. <laughs> Alright, so this this part of the buffalo hunt for real may not be as exciting as my dream, but I think we're going to have success and I think it's going to be well worth it. I'm pretty excited. We're about, we're about two or three minutes from where I think the buffalo or the bison, same word, um, where they're gathered and they, <laughs> it's legal to eat them here. So um, I'm excited. Hope you're excited. Uh, get ready. All right, so, um, you know, it's getting kind of late. I got to get back to my actual job <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so it's going to be a few hours. Um, you know, sit tight, hold back. Um, it's a good thing it's going to be a few hours, too, because I'm actually kind of full from from uh, goldfish. But it's going to be a few hours before I can get back to uh, my buffalo hunt. So um, sit tight relax and uh, yeah stay where you are all right here's the place okay so here's why we're here bison burger Excited. So yeah, here we are. Actual bison burger, along with truffle tater tots, truffle tater tots, and mac and cheese. I'm excited. So here's the thing about bison. It's really lean. There's not a whole lot of fat in, in there, but. Um, and the flavor's really good. Um, <laughs> if they had the time to make bison burgers on the trail, I could hang out with Lewis and Clark, along with truffle pots. Okay, so you can, as you can see, I finished it. Um, here's the thing about that burger. 
That was eight ounces. That's a half pound. Even for a big guy like me, that's a lot. I mean, that's a substantial meal. From our book, our book however, we're learning that, you know, the guys on that trip, they ate nine pounds of meat per day. That would mean me eating 18 of those burgers every day. I mean, that's like, let me do the math. A whole bunch of calories. I mean, just think how hard they were working. That they were able to burn all the energy off. They had to eat that much. I mean, it's nuts. They were, they were supermen. My man, these tots, on point. All right, so I felt really silly um, videoing in a public restaurant like that, but hey, it is what it is. So um, <clears throat> I'm on my way back to my hotel. It's late, it's 9.30. Um, I'm tired, you guys should be in bed. But um, yeah, just continue reading your book. If you have some time, the rest of this class period, read, read, read. Don't just sit there and jabber. Um, like I said, she'll be taking names, and if I have to email parents, I will. Um, not bluffing. That's legitimately what's going to happen. So behave, be quiet, be reading, <laughs> and uh, I will see you guys all on Friday. All right.